Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you're having a great day. We are back with the Learning Roblox Studio series. And today we're going to be going over the Deadly Lava chapter. Now, as always, if this video does help you guys out, make sure you guys smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development videos. I do also have a Patreon if you guys would like to support me and gain access to a lot of scripts that I've made in a lot of my previous videos. There's a link down below in the description of my Patreon. If you guys would like to support me, you guys can go check it out there. And with that being said, let's get into it. So if you guys didn't watch last episode that's okay you guys can create a brand new place if you would like otherwise i'm going to resume from the place that i made in the last episode where we actually made three disappearing parts right here also i forgot to mention there's a link down below in the description to this current chapter that i'm on if you guys would like to follow and read along with me you guys definitely can anyways in the last chapter we learned how to make changes to the game in a loop over time what if we want to make changes based on the player's behavior this course will show you how to make a deadly lava floor which kills the player when they step on it we're going to actually need to set up a place place in our game where we're going to put the deadly lava. In the last chapter, we actually made disappearing platforms, which I'm going to delete two of these and only leave one because that's how much we actually made in the last episode. I'm also going to stretch this out a little bit. So this is our disappearing platform right here. In the last episode, we did create this and our right under this would actually be a really good spot to put the deadly lava in. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to the workspace. We are going to insert a brand new part and we are going to rename that to lava floor we're also going to move it around a little bit let's go ahead and move it directly under here so it's actually a pretty big lava floor all right that's pretty good let's also make it a little bit smaller too it doesn't need to be too large there we go that's pretty good then we are also going to set the material to neon and then we're going to set the color to orange so that looks pretty good although that looks very yellow which is pretty odd we could also set the brick color to neon orange like they have it so there we go and now what we want to do is we want to go to the lava floor part and we want to insert a script inside of here and we are going to rename the script to kill player once again we are going to delete the print statement and we are going to create a variable the variable's name is going to be lava so we're going to say local lava and then we are going to set the value of this to script dot parent just like we did in the last episode now we're actually going to start learning about events you'll need to use an event to detect when a player touches the lava every part has a touched event which fires when something touches it you can connect this event to run a function when it fires so what we want to do is we now want to go under this and we want to make a brand new function so we're going to say local function and the name of the function is going to be kill player once again, we are following camel case. So we lowercase the first letter of the first word, and then we uppercase the first letter of every single word after that. So there we go. We hit enter, and now we have our function created. Then directly under the function, what we want to do is we want to use the lava variable. And then how we access the properties before was by using a period. We're going to do the same way, and this time we are going to use an event. If we scroll down, we can actually find some events right here. So change is an example of one of the events. We can also see child added, destroying. These little lightning icons right here, those are events. So touch ended is another event. And then if we go far enough down, we should be able to see touch. But if not, let's just go ahead and type it out. So now we can see touched. So we're going to say lava.touch. And that'll basically fire whenever the lava part has actually been touched. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say colon. And now we're going to say connect. And then what we're going to connect it to is actually the kill player function that we created above. What we're basically saying here is we're getting lava. So we are getting the lava floor part. And then we're saying whenever this is touched, we are going to connect it to a function. And the function that we're going to connect it to is kill player so now we actually need to get the touching part what i mean by that is whatever part is actually touching the lava floor we need to find that part to kill the player the function will need an object associated with the player a parts touch event can provide the other part that touched it but only if you request it by making parameter inside of the function parameters are definitions of what a function expects to receive when it's called a parameter can be used in a function just like any other variable you can pass information to a parameter by including it in the parentheses when the function is called additionally parameters are defined in the parentheses on the first line of a function so let's look at our kill player function for example let's say that we wanted to know the name of the player that we're going to kill so we can insert a parameter right here and call that name then let's say for instance that parameter was passed to us we could print that out by saying print name and that would actually print the name that we give to this function now the way that we actually pass the name to this function would be by making parentheses right here and then passing through some sort of name so we could say for example monster just as an example so 
now we are actually calling this function and we're passing through this as an argument or a parameter and then the function actually accepts the name and then we're going to print it. So right here we have the function. This is the parameters that we are accepting and this is actually using the parameters that we are accepting. This is when we call the function and we pass through the parameter. Anyway, I'm going to undo that. I just want to show you guys that for an example to hopefully help you guys understand parameters. So the parameter that we want to make for kill player is actually going to be other part. So whenever the kill player function is called, the other part parameter will represent the part that touched the lava floor. And then we'll actually write code that we can use the parameter in the function. So character and humanoid. When a player touches the lava, Roblox actually detects the specific body part of the player that touched it, such as the left leg or right foot. This part is in the player's character model. The character model contains all the objects that make up a player's avatar in the game, including the individual body parts of the player, such as the head, limbs, and torso, any clothing or accessories worn by the player, the humanoid, a special object which contains many properties relating to the player, including the player's health, the humanoid root part which controls the player's movement. So any body part that touches the lava is part of the character model, so you can get the reference to that character with other part parent. What we're going to do now is inside of the kill player function, we are going to create another variable and we are going to get the part parent. We're going to say local part parent equals then other part and then we're going to find the parent of the other part so let's say for example the left foot or the right leg actually touches the lava part what it's going to do is other part is going to be left foot or right leg and then the parent of that is actually going to be the player's character now realistically i don't like how they name their variable here because it's not too clear what you could also name this is character because that makes a lot more sense when a part actually touches it the parent of that part is going to be the character model as long as it is a player but we don't need to name it that i'm just going to continue following their guide although i do think it would have made it a little bit easier to understand so from the character model we'll need to get the humanoid object in order to kill the player this can be done with the find first child function just pass it the name of the thing you're looking for and it will provide the first matching child that it finds in that object so we're going to create another variable and this time we are going to say humanoid then we're going to say part parent and we're going to call the function find first child and then we are going to look for the child named humanoid so we're calling find first child on the part parent variable with humanoid as the child to find and we're storing that result in a variable called humanoid now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an if statement so the if statement is going to be if humanoid then and the reason that we're making this if statement is because we want to check if humanoid has been found and we only want to actually do something like kill the player or destroy the player if the humanoid was actually found let's say for instance that humanoid was not found then it could throw an error when we run any of the code below it such as trying to kill the player for example so that's why we are checking if humanoid then then that means if humanoid exists or if the humanoid has been found then we're going to do something otherwise it's just not going to do anything so we can easily check if humanoid was found using an if statement the code in an if statement will only run if the condition to find in the first line is true. There are a variety of operators that can be used to build more complex conditions, which you'll encounter in the future courses. For now, just put the humanoid variable there. Create an if statement with humanoid as the condition, as we just did. So now with this if statement, we're seeing if the humanoid does exist. And then if it does, we are going to get the health property. And then we are actually going to set the value of the health property to zero, effectively killing the player. With that, the lava floor is complete. Now we can test our game and we should find that your deadly lava successfully kills the player on contact so let's go ahead and start the game walk on over to our lava floor oh of course we forgot to anchor that let's go ahead and make sure that we actually set the anchor property to true so that doesn't fall and we can start it again now let's go ahead and walk on over to it and oh here we go let's see if we can cross the other side but oh no we fall and then we die instantly that worked perfectly awesome so let me try to further explain a little bit about the whole part parent and the humanoid let's go ahead back into our game and let's look inside of our workspace now inside of your workspace you can actually find a model named whatever your character whatever your roblox username is for example this is mine right here and it's named monster now if we look inside of here we can see a bunch of different parts like down here we have the head the left foot the left hand the left lower arm and all these different parts let's say for instance that we actually landed on that lava most likely something like the left foot or another part will actually touch it so if we look back at our script when we actually touch it and when we actually call the kill player and we're passing through the other part the other part would actually be the left foot for example 
So then when we get the part parent variable, we're actually getting the left foot, but we're actually finding its parent. So if we look at the parent, for example, that would be this model right here. So that's what the parent actually is. It is this model right here. Then when we have the model, we're going to look inside of the model and then we're using the find first child function to find something inside of the model. Sort of the opposite of parent is child. Basically, the parent is something above or something that owns this. So for example, monster is the parent of the left foot. But then if we say we're looking for a child, then we're looking for the child inside of this model and the child that we're looking for is called humanoid. Rather than something that owns monster or owns this, which would be the parent, we're looking for something that monster owns. So we're looking for humanoid and that is the child of monster. Then once we actually found the humanoid, we set that to a variable and then we actually change the health property. So if we click on humanoid, we can actually search for the health property. And here we go. We see the health property right here. So then we actually set the health property of this humanoid right here to zero. And that's how we're killing the player. Hopefully that explanation makes it a little bit easier to understand the whole part and the parent and then also the child as well. If that made it more confusing for you, I'm sorry, but hopefully that explanation helps you understand it at least a little bit more. It can definitely be confusing, but I think as we continue through this series, it'll most likely become a lot easier for you to understand. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, hopefully this video does help you guys out. If it did and you guys did enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you guys are brand new around here and you guys want to see some more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make my other videos, there's a link down below in the description of the Patreon. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.